Hey, what's going on? Devin here from Die Precision. I'm out at Detroit for Lone Wolf Paintball and we're gonna go over the Die R2 loader. What are you gonna tell us about it? So I'm gonna go over it. If you were to get this product out of the box, kind of what you'd wanna do, make sure you install some batteries, um, go over a couple of the features, you know, talk about uh, some maintenance or some things you can keep an eye on so you'll won't experience or you'll have less chance of uh, having any issues while you're out there playing. Um, right now I have this actually hopper expanded. So with the R2, you do get a high capacity hopper. You get two different capacity features. Um, with the lid expanded like it is now, you can fit 260 paintballs. Um, so you know, hold more paint in that hopper. Um, on the back of the hopper, there's a, a little lever here. You can flip to the left to change the height or to the right to take the shell off. So if you go to the left, you can drop it down and you reduce the profile. Now you're gonna hold 200 paintballs. So if you're a person that likes to play in the back of the field, you can start with your hopper higher, more paint. As you go on, you're refilling from pods and the pods are only gonna have so much. I mean, you could change this on the fly while you're playing or you could leave it up for the whole game. Um, it doesn't change the hopper profile too much. If you do play with it up, um, it does increase it slightly, but it's, it's not, not a huge difference. Um, but if you are concerned about it, let's say you're going from the back center and you're gonna go dive in the snake, it's something that you could change quickly. Um, the other thing is with the R2 compared to like the LTR or the rotor, you've got a wider mouth with the lid itself. Um, so it just makes it easier if you're trying to dump your paint in there, you're not gonna, not gonna have a chance of missing. Um, to take the lid off, on the inside you've got a little tab in here, so I can do it backwards. Oops. Horrible doing it backwards there. So you push this tab down, and what it does is it retracts the, the pins on the right and left side. Um, so as you do that, then the, the lid will come off. It's the same thing for the quick feed. Um, you know, to the tab off to install it, you're gonna just wanna make sure you angle these uh, pins. Uh, so I can't, can't do this stuff backwards. Hmm. So just angle the pins there. Um, the bottom of the spring will go down into, there's a little uh, small little recess that's cut in for the bottom of the spring here, just to make sure you have spring tension. Um, so. And for that feature alone, it's worth considering getting the R2 over the LTR. Yeah, and then you can, pretty easy to go in and gently, uh, you can hold on to it and make sure it's, it's locked in place. Um, You've got the power button on the top here, turns it on and off. This bottom button here is for the audio settings. So one thing is, as you start going through, after 100 paintballs, you'll hear it beep, um, which is kind of a signal that you know like how, many, how much paint you've gone through. Um, you can push that button to reset it so it continues to go, or you can just let it go idle and then it won't, won't go again. Um, just a feature for some people, if they need a, a reminder, it takes time to reload. Um, a lot of players will, will out over time figuring out by the feel, but sometimes you know having that little reminder of the hopper being out of paint or being empty and hearing that beeping at you is a is a reminder other than no paint coming out of the gun. To take this bottom tray off, because you do have the the tray inside here to make the hopper expand, you've got a little bit of extra extra to take it apart compared to the LTR. So you have got two red tabs on the right and left side. These slide back. Um, and then on the back of the spring wrap. So you have a spring wrap, all the R2s and LTRs come with the spring wrap. So if you get low on paint, paint will start to feed into the center of the arm of the rotor. So you don't have to worry about it not feeding. Um, there's two other red tabs. So you've got these two red tabs here you push back. And then on the back here, there's these little, little red, red lever you kind of push up. And then there's these black uh, buttons you can push in. You're pushing these uh, these two here. So this is the the lever piece that you want to lift up, and then you push those in, and then pull up. This will come out. Has your spring ramp. When you're kind of tray inside. Rotor assembly. You've got a couple different pieces here. Just similar with like the LTR. Um, making sure these gears are clean, there's no debris in there, will make sure that you have less of a chance of any issues. Um, you know, especially people that like to play and use a quick feed, you know, along with the paint that you're putting in through the lid, you're also, you know, depending on if you're playing on grass or dirt or sand, other items will get through this lid. 
um, getting sand or dirt inside these gears can cause problems. So, you know, keeping those clean is, is pretty important. You've got your gearbox here. Um, it's kind of the, the hopper broken down. Um, the gearbox does take three AA batteries. Um, I, I would definitely suggest just using some, some regular batteries. I, I wouldn't, would, don't recommend using rechargeables. Um, I mean, it can be done, but it's not something that I would, I would recommend doing. Um, with the LTR, you, you have, and, and the R2, right? You've got the light that pops through um, while you're playing. If you, and, and also the, the R2 has a sound. If you want to turn the sound off or turn that light off so you don't see a light or people playing don't see a light, um, you've got two dip switches on the circuit board. Right now, both are on. If I was to turn both of these down, it's going to turn the um, sound off and that light off. So when you turn it on, you won't actually see a light. Um, if you want to have one on or one off, you know, you can adjust it so that way you're only seeing the light or you're only hearing the sound. Just a preference for people that might want to play if they're using like CQB style environments or they're playing at night, they don't want something, you know, bright. It's a blue light that illuminates. Other than that, um, there's really not a whole lot of other, other things you need to worry about. Um, there is a tension screw here where you can adjust to make the, the hopper feed harder or softer, um, depending on the scene, but, but more times than not, that's not something you're gonna have to adjust or play with. Um, leaving it flush is, is where you wanna be. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that's kind of the R2 broken down in different parts. Have you um, found having to adjust that over time, like say you've had the R2 for a few years that it needs a little tension added back in? No, I wouldn't say that. I would say the other thing you might want to look at is if you're, if you're trying to get something that's really fragile paints. Um, because with the way the rotor works, especially with the R2, um, the R2, as, it, as you start to shoot and it starts to go, the, the motor will turn on and it'll turn on a reduced percentage just to get things going. As it notices that you're shooting at a higher rate of fire, the motor speeds up and goes faster. Um, the, the rotor's gonna try to put paint in your gun as fast as possible. Um, if you're having a paint that's really fragile, sometimes when you get some of the turnip paints, if it's really cold outside, you know, the, the paint gets more eggshelly or, or more brittle chance of breaking. So you can reduce the tension if, if it's getting too hard. Um, that would be the only time I'd really say you really need to, to look at that is if you're breaking paint and just because the paint's too fragile and it's too cold for that day. Um, similar to the LTR, all the electronics are just in that gearbox? Correct, yeah. So all your electronics are here. Um, you've got your circuit board inside. Um, you've got the motor on the left side. This is definitely parts that you could, could get wet. Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't suggest going swimming with it, but if it got sweat, gets wet, it's not the end of the day as well. Um, and then same thing where, where you've got robust materials for everything. So it's, it's not something that's going to fall apart or just break on you. Okay. Um, just because people are going to ask, we touched on it in the last video, but uh, the components from the LTR are or are not compatible with the R2 interchangeable? The components from the LTR are not. I mean, there's a couple pieces that you can share. Like you can, you can change some of these out. These pieces can go backwards into the, R, the LTR or into an R2. Um, but other than those parts here, um, they're, they're not, all the other parts are independent. Okay. And then kind of like with the LTR, when you do put the gearbox back in, make sure you have the shark fin. You know, if you do jam, make sure this is forward. Um, start with the uh, button in first. And then you can also double check that when you pull the shark fin, the gears go back. So if you do happen to experience a jam while you're playing, you can pull that shark fin and it'll, it'll pull everything back into place. Get everything back together there, your rotor assembly components, you know, making sure everything's clean. And also the kind of the fail safe, just pulling the shark fin just to make sure everything's lined up. Start with the tray and the nose in first. Everything clicks in together. You've got your locking tabs there. You know, that way you're not gonna lose this tray. Um, put the nose in there first. Now when you are, because you do have the tray, you just gotta make sure that you line up from the nose, the right and the left side, and then you push this to the left, or I'm sorry, to the right. So that way it's gonna go down in the key slots for, for the hopper to close. So if you go to the right, it splits the top off, right? And 
and then if you go to the left side, it raises the lid, and then it's, it's, it locks in place so that way it's not going to you know, go down while you're playing. Awesome. So of course, guys, if you want any of these die products, the R2, the LTR, the M3, the DSR, the tool kits, you know where to get them, lonewolfpaintball.com. Uh, and of course, follow us and die. Uh, you guys got social platforms, right? You're on Facebook and Instagram yeah, and all those, all those places. Yeah, all those good ones. Uh, he was telling me they got tech videos now coming out on a regular. So go check those out. Make sure uh, you follow them. And if you got any questions, leave them in the comments. And uh, if we can't answer them, we'll send them along to Devin and make sure he gets us the, the response we're looking for. Uh, Sounds like a plan. Awesome. Thanks, guys.